Would the state like to make an opening statement? Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon. In November of last year, Hillsborough County Fire Rescue and the Sheriff's Office were called out to a, a location in the Palm River Clare Mill area for a house fire. When they arrived on the scene, the fire rescue worked diligently to put out the fire from the rear of this house that they came across. And at some point, the fire was extinguished for the most part, and so they attempted to make entry in through the front door of that home. When they did so, they found that the front door was not open very easily. In fact, you'll hear from a witness who works for fire rescue, Captain Ben Harrison, who will tell you he had to shoulder his way through that door as though something were obstructing. A sheriff's deputy by the name of Paul Gertanis was watching from outside as that occurred. <coughs> Those gentlemen eventually made entry into that house and they realized the obstruction behind that front door was the deceased body of Derek Archie. As they made their way further into the home, they could observe that Mr. Archie had a wound to his head. They also noticed that he was badly burned. They continued in through this home and came across a second bedroom. Again, this door was also somewhat obstructed from being opened fully. As they had a chance to observe the contents of that room, they noticed that everything was strewn about. Drawers of the cabinet were pulled out. The mattress was flipped up. And obstructing the door to that room was the deceased body of Xavier Green. And in the corner of that room was the deceased body of Haley Stone. At that point, this was no longer a house fire. And so they removed themselves from the house without disturbing anything, contacted homicide investigators to come to the scene. The sheriff's office responded, and the investigation got underway. And so multiple things at that point began to occur. One, the sheriff's office employs their crime scene technicians to come out and start to observe the scene, both the exterior and interior, to determine what, if any, evidence they can gather to explain these three dead bodies and this house fire. You will hear from some of those people involved in the crime scene portion of this case. A detective by the name of Thomas Dirks and two crime scene technicians, Nancy Hager and Mar Maria Ramirez. You will receive, I expect, photographs that show both the exterior of that home and the interior, those bodies on the inside and the remainder of the contents of that home. You will discover from them that there were many shell casings left at that scene, 11 that we expect to be admitted into evidence, all the same type. You will further find out that there is a gas can in the middle of the hallway, badly burned. The remainder of the house has also been turned about, beds flipped over, contents of drawers removed. Simultaneously, there are members who participate in arson investigations from Hillsborough County Fire Rescue and from the State Fire Marshal. While the crime scene technicians are doing their part, they are also investigating. They have a canine come by to note if there is any indication of accelerants that may have contributed to causing this fire. They get those indications, and you'll see photographs where the handler for that canine leaves little golf tees around the home, identifying certain points where that dog has identified the possibility that there might be some accelerants. Samples are taken to determine what that might be. That gas can is recovered. While that is occurring, the medical examiner is also called out to the scene. And you will hear from him, Dr. Lesek Krastowski, who has worked as a medical examiner here in Hillsborough County for some time. Re responding to the scene as part of his duties to get as much information as he can about the surroundings of where these deceased bodies were found. I expect you'll hear from him and you'll see photographs uh, of the autopsies and of the three deceased that were found inside the home. And you'll notice that in addition to the burns caused by the house fire, they are riddled with gunshot wounds. Medical examiner will conduct and will explain to you how he conducts those autopsies. You will learn from the medical examiner that all three of these people, Derek Archie, Haley Stone, and Xavier Green, 
did not die from that house fire. They died from gunshot wounds to the head. And you'll see where those gunshot wounds are, in addition to other gunshot wounds on their body. And Dr. Kostowski, I expect, will testify that the burns they suffered are post-mortem burns, right? Burns caused after they were already deceased. While this is occurring, sheriff's office detectives are looking for any evidence that might be outside of the home. And they come across some. Some pieces of evidence include cell phone records that I expect will be admitted. And surveillance video that you will have an opportunity to see from a next door neighbor named Abel Fuentes. Now he affixed a security camera that looked from a perch on his home and has a view over the fence that separates their two properties and it looks towards the front door of that house where these three bodies are found. And within that video, the detectives think, well, how can we identify what we see in this video? And one of the things I expect you'll see in that video is someone entering the house and exiting wearing a black hoodie. That person returns to the car they came in, and sometime later, that person goes back up to the front door of that house. And he re-enters and is inside for some period of time. Now that person leaves in the vehicle they came in, and roughly two hours later returns to that same home, this time wielding a red gas can. Enters the home for a third time that day. And as you'll see on the surveillance video, an orange glow, a ball of flame, put through the front window of that house. And that same person, no longer carrying that red gas can, but still wearing that black hoodie, sprints from the rear of the home. So who is this person? Well, that's where the detectives begin to locate other people who might be witnesses. And I expect that you will hear from some of those witnesses who will identify that person as the defendant, Xavier Whitehead. I anticipate you will hear from a gentleman named Ricky Wilkerson. Mr. Wilkerson will be testifying from in custody. So don't let that surprise you when you see it. But I anticipate that Mr. Wilkerson's testimony will be that he drove that vehicle that brought the defendant to that home that day. And yes, he is in custody because he has pled guilty to his portion of this crime. And he will identify that Xavier Whitehead was the person he picked up in that vehicle. He will identify that Xavier Whitehead is the person who walks into the house initially and walks back out to the side of the car, now wearing this black hoodie. That Xavier Whitehead, the defendant in this case, is the person who then reapproaches the front of that home and enters again. And while he's inside that home, Ricky Wilkerson will tell you he hears what he thinks are maybe nail gun noises. And what you'll piece together is that those are not nail gun noises. Those are the gunshots as Xavier Whitehead shoots Haley Stone and Derek Archie and Xavier Green over and over in the head until they are dead inside that home. After he does this, it is the defendant who causes that home to be in a state of array. He pulls all the drawers out. The bed is flipped over, looking for things that he can take from this home. Now, Mr. Wilkerson will not be the only witness. I'm sure you all remember our discussions about single witness cases. Well, that won't be the case. And Mr. Wilkerson will not be the only one to provide to you <coughs> testimony and evidence about the identification of this defendant. From those phone records I mentioned earlier, you will hear from an FBI agent named Matthew Carmen. He specializes in cell phone analysis, specifically with relation to cell site location information, right? Every time phones are moving around, they can be geolocated, and that is what he does. And from those phone records, he will explain to you that at the same time Ricky Wilkerson is saying, that's Xavier Whitehead entering this house, exiting this house, going back in again. Mr. Carmen will confirm that. 
by showing you that Xavier Whitehead, Whitehead's phone traveled from East Tampa down to the Palm River area and is pinging, a word you might hear from him, or using cell phone towers in the same area as this home. But Mr. Carmen is not the only one who will corroborate Ricky Wilkerson's testimony. You will hear from Corey Jackson. Corey Jackson is a witness who lived inside that home for some period of time. He will testify that that morning, he left for work around 8 a.m., and you'll be able to see that on the surveillance video. You will also see another gentleman named Daryl Horton who will come to the house and speaks with Mr. Archie, speaks with Mr. Green, around 9.30 in the morning. So up to 9.30, we know that the people inside that home are okay. I expect Mr. Horton will tell you that. Everything was fine. The house was in a normal state of order. There was no commotion. Mr. Green was alive. Mr. Archie was alive. Corey Jackson will tell you that he knows Xavier Whitehead, the defendant in this case. And he will identify Xavier Whitehead as the person who exits that vehicle, enters the home, comes back out in that black hoodie, approaches the front steps again, and re-enters that home. He'll be the same person, and Corey Jackson will identify him as that individual who returns with a red gas can and runs away as the house goes up into flames. He will also corroborate what Ricky Wilkerson tells you and what Matt Carmen can confirm to those cell phone records. You will hear the defendant's own words through a recorded phone call with Corey Jackson. That defendant that you saw yesterday, Xavier Whitehead, his own words will tell you that Corey Jackson is someone who can identify him. And in fact, you will hear Xavier Whitehead beg Corey Jackson, please go back to the police. Tell them that isn't me. Because to get to Xavier Whitehead, they spoke to Corey Jackson early on, the detectives did. And they confirmed that identity by showing him clips of that surveillance video. It's the same one you'll see today, early on. Xavier Whitehead knew about that. And he begged Corey Jackson, please go back. Tell them it wasn't me. You're someone who can ID me. The police trust you. So it won't just be Ricky Wilkerson, right? It won't just be Matthew Carmen. It won't just be Corey Jackson. The defendant himself will confirm that the identity of the person in that video, as Corey Jackson told the police, is him. At the end of this case, you won't be asking yourself or wrestling with, how did they die? Medical examiner will make it very clear. Gunshot wounds to the head was the manner of death, and cause of death was homicide. You won't be asking yourself, how did this house catch on fire? Because those samples I mentioned earlier were tested, and an expert by the name of Perry Kusayafis will tell you, yes, that's accelerant in that house. That gas can was recovered. This was an intentional fire. You won't be asking yourself who these people are, or if they died before or after that fire started. That will be determined by the medical examiner. People will be identified. What you'll be asking yourself is, do I know that black hooded figure? Do I know the person who's entering the house, who's done all this? And your answer will be, yes, I do. It's Xavier Whitehead, the defendant in this case. You'll know that because Ricky Wilkerson IDs him. You'll know that because his phone will place him in the area of these crimes. You'll know that because Corey Jackson will identify him. And you'll know that because his own words beg Corey Jackson to change his testimony. That Corey Jackson is someone who can identify him. And he's right. Corey Jackson can identify him and will identify him. And that will be corroborating evidence with everything else you will receive throughout the remainder of this trial. And so once you have received all of the photographs, heard the testimony, you will have no doubt in your minds 
as to how these people died, how this fire came to be, and you will certainly have no doubt that the person who caused all of this, the person who killed Haley Stone, the person who killed Derek Archie, and the person who killed Xavier Green, the person who returned and set that house on fire, burning the deceased bodies as they lay inside, is Xavier Whitehead. You will have no doubt about that. And without any doubt as to those issues, we would ask you to return a verdict of guilty as the defendant is charged. Thank you. Thank you.